Hey everyone, welcome to another video from BetweenCADClasses.com. This time we are going to look at how we can use the visibility states inside of AutoCAD's dynamic block editor to combine several different blocks into one. If you would like to try this exercise along with me, you'll find a link for the exercise file in the description for this video. As you can see, I currently have three fasteners here, and they're each individual blocks, and what I would like to do instead is to make one block that has the option to switch between these different visibility states. With visibility states, what will essentially happen is we can get it to show one of these items and then hide the others. So to start with, I'm actually going to create an empty block. So I'll come up and choose my Create Block tool. I'll go ahead and give it a name here. In this case, I'll call it Fasteners top. I'll go ahead and leave the base point as zero and typically when you are creating a block you're going to select geometry but this time I'm going to start with an empty block and start adding to it. So I'll go ahead and check that I want to open this in the block editor then click OK. I get a little message to double check that I really want to create an empty block and that is what I want to do so I will click continue. Now you can see that I am in the block editor and I'm ready to draw my first visibility state. In the interest of time, rather than drawing the first one in, I've already got them created as blocks, so I will instead insert my first one in. So I'll start with my hex cap screw and I'll just bring it in at zero comma zero. Right now this is a block. I'm going to go ahead and explode it to make sure that I don't have other blocks nested inside my dynamic block. So again, I did this as a block, but you can imagine just going ahead and coming in here and drawing your first visibility state as well. Next, I'm going to open up my block authoring palettes, switch to the parameters tab and bring in the visibility parameter. As you probably already know, typically when you're dealing with dynamic blocks, we add a parameter and then an action. But in the case of visibility, what we're actually going to do is open up this area up top here, this visibility panel. So I'll choose my visibility parameter. I'm going to click wherever I want my drop down arrow to appear. So I'll pick in one of the lower left corners here. And you can see as soon as I clicked, this area up top opened up. So I'm going to go ahead and click on visibility states to open up the dialog box. I'm going to begin by renaming this one. So I'll click the rename button and I will name this one hex cap screw. Then I'm going to go ahead and create my next visibility state. I will select new. I will give it a name. The next one is going to be my, for my Phillips flathead screw. So I'll give it an appropriate name here. And then here's where the magic happens down below. I can then set what I want to happen to the existing geometry in the new visibility state. And by default, it's set to leave everything as they are. Instead, what I want it to do is to hide all existing objects. Then I will click OK, then OK again, and I now have a new blank visibility state. So now I could go ahead and insert the next one, the Phillips flathead screw. Once more, I'll bring it in at zero comma zero, and once more, I will explode it. And that's pretty much the process. I'll go ahead and create one more visibility state this time for my slotted flathead screw. And then once more, I'll make sure that it's set to hide all existing objects in this new state. I'll click OK and OK again. And then once more, I will insert the appropriate block or draw in the geometry that I need for this visibility state. And then once more, I'll explode this one so that it's just separate lines and arcs. And just like that, I've created my three visibility states. I'll go ahead and close my editor and save the changes. It's not going to affect any of these existing blocks. I will need to insert a copy of my new block here, my fasteners top. And you can see that after I click to place it, then select it, I have a drop down arrow now, and I can choose the different visibility states. Hopefully you can think of ways that you can apply this to the type of work that you do. 
as I look at this one, I might decide, you know what, I typically use the Phillips screw the most, so I'm going to go back in here and edit the block. Then I'll bring up my visibility states dialog, and I will select the Phillips and move it to the top. And I'll go ahead and set it current. So moving it to the top is going to make it the default now. I'll go ahead and close and save. And you can see that when I go to insert another copy of this, you can already even see it in the preview here, the default is going to be the Phillips. To recap, we simply add the visibility parameter. That allows us to rename the visibility states and add new ones, and then most importantly, hide other geometry in those new visibility states. That concludes this look at visibility states in dynamic blocks in AutoCAD. If you found this video helpful, please give me a like, and please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this, and you can come by my website, betweencadclasses.com. Thanks for watching.